Welcome to this week's Wednesday posting from the, the glossary of my book, The Desire for Mutual Recognition, Social Movements and the Dissolution of the False Self. Uh, every week I read uh, uh, the next term in the glossary at the end of the book. <clears throat> this, this will give us maybe 50 videos. Uh, which to, taken together really do give a good sense of what the book as a whole is about. So we're still in the P's, if you've been following the videos up to this point. And uh, uh, today, the today's word or term in the glossary is pre-reflective as opposed to reflective consciousness pre-reflective as opposed to reflective consciousness. So what it says is, pre-reflective consciousness describes our immediate experience of the world and others prior to any reflection on that experience. Our encounter with the other, <clears throat> excuse me, our encounter with the other, with each other, is always pre-reflective, an immediate co-presence that aspires to the completion of mutual recognition. The desire for mutual recognition means for me, the desire for the realization of that immediacy of co-presence, of withness that would liberate us from the withdrawn space of our alienated world's mutual detachment, emanating from fear of the other, of each other. Okay, so that is actually a, a that is a description of tries to evoke that very thing that I just read, that passage, tries to evoke the experience of being with another person, being with others, as we experience that pre-reflectively, immediately, without reflecting on it. When I use the word withness to achieve a certain sense of withness, I'm trying to evoke in you, the listener, and in myself as the speaker, exactly what that experience feels like withness that is being with the other person as opposed to detached from the other person or when i say we enter into each other's presence and as as a co-presence as an having the immediacy of co-presence when i say that i'm trying to capture what it feels like to actually be in relation to another, not reflect on that, not think about, hmm, like a philosopher like John Locke would say, hmm, man in the state of nature wants X, Y, and Z. Well, that's very, that's an abstract reflection on human reality that he is really imposing on human reality. But what I'm doing here is trying to to capture the, ex the experience itself of being with another person, not talk about that from above in a reflective sense. Your, your, our pre-reflective experience of crossing the street, take a, a very simple example. When we cross the street, we don't really reflect on any number of things that we all that we are conscious of as we cross the street. We're conscious of how roughly how long it's gonna to take to get across the street, the likelihood of other cars coming that could be dangerous, uh, where to step so that we don't stumble, um, the location of other people, <laughs> uh, whether there are any dangerous dogs around, uh, not very often, but these things are all synthesized pre-reflectively 
without our giving any thought to them. Uh, they become part of our pre-reflective experience. So what I'm trying to do in the book is, is grasp that pre-reflective experience of being with other people in the world, of our social reality, and illuminate that through reflection, to use a type of reflection that doesn't talk about the world at a distance, but instead tries to reflect on the pre-reflective experience of living itself, so as to illuminate it so we can see it more clearly. Uh, I just opened the book to a random passage in the book that shows what I mean by that. And uh, in a way explains why the book has long sentences and uh, is sort of writes in a style that is very much a spoken style. And my effort is in order to reveal pre-reflective experience, that is experienced before you've reflected on it as you're living it. In writing, we have to evoke that experience in the writing itself. In the reflection on the experience, we have to evoke the experience so that it becomes visible to the reader, to the writer, and to the reader. So here's a passage describing my experience during when, when Hillary Clinton and Bernie, in the chapter on politics, when Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders were running against each other uh, in 2016, for those of you that are able to remember that, and if you're not, I'm just gonna tell you about it. Uh, Bernie Sanders, Hillary Clinton was the leading mainstream Democratic candidate and Bernie Sanders was the insurgent who was trying to gain enough momentum to win the nomination all through the early primaries. And uh, so what I'm in this paragraph that I'm about to read, I'm describing one moment of that as a, to illuminate a one pre-reflective moment that actually occurred in my experience Actually, I'm claiming in the experience of the whole world in a certain sense, who was paying attention to this. Um, well, as follows. So here, here it is, it's on page 152. And if, and when I turn on the news, the weight of the false we upon me will become that much greater because the newscaster, as I have earlier shown in discussing his or her persona, his or her presentation of self, is on the side of the false we and wishes to present its reality as inevitable, as, as real. When the media that is mainly mediating the false we to itself predicts the inevitability of a Clinton sweep and that she now has the nomination within her grasp, I cannot but know that a certain number of college students in Minnesota and Massachusetts, where there were primaries that day, in Minnesota and Massachusetts will be less likely to remember to vote. As they instantly sense with their youthful, still relatively unsubdued life force, that perhaps politics isn't for them after all and shift to thinking about going out dancing. In fact, I am hesitating to turn on that news broadcast because I know that it will hurt me to do so. I'm willing to still hope for a Sanders victory or good enough showing, but I'm not willing to expose myself too much to the humiliation of once again being thrown under the bus of the newscasters smiling, relentless persona, that false self manifesting itself as real and claiming to speak neutrally as a journalist for the state of the we as a matter of fact. Okay, now that paragraph 
<laughs> in that paragraph, you can see what I'm trying to do is describe one moment in a primary campaign in which my feeling about whether Bernie Sanders as the insurgent candidate could possibly build enough momentum to break through the artificial conduct of the race thus far and become a real force that people become impassioned to embrace. I'm trying to describe one moment when I turn on the news of what my experience is like because my experience will affect whether I myself can leap into that hope and therefore make the realization in this case of the Sanders campaign in a larger sense of building a real we, a real community, whether I myself am willing to take the risk of doing that. In the passage, I'm describing my vulnerability to humiliation if I hope and it's unrequited Therefore, my calculation <clears throat> of exactly <clears throat> from the way the newscaster is presenting him or herself to mediate the whole society, how will it affect young, early, young voters in Minnesota or Massachusetts to feel, oh no, what I was hoping this morning when I woke up isn't really gonna happen. Uh, I don't think I'll, I think I'll go out dancing instead of bother about the whole primary. And how all that is totalized is a collective pre-reflective experience across the society, expressing the longing for community and the fear that the possibility of community is not real. And so that's one paragraph in the book that is trying to evoke that moment in the primary as a way of using our capacity to reflect on pre-reflective experience so as to make visible what otherwise is not visible. <clears throat> In fact, Hillary Clinton, I believe, won some of those primaries in a way that she might not have if the circulation of hope had been able to achieve a higher level of momentum and intensity on the Sanders side. Um, and of course the context here, which I refer to, is the, the struggle between what I call the real we trying to be born, the real community trying to be born, and the false we that is constructed by the media of who we are and what we want and what is inevitable in the wider society. So, That's the idea. That's the idea of the style of the book is to evoke so that we can capture in reflection, to evoke experience so that we can say, yes, I recognize that. That's how it works. And this is, that's how it worked on this one day in, during the primary campaign in 2016. Or to say, no, that's not quite how it worked. It was actually a little more this and a little more that. That's, the, that's a great conversation. That's the conversation that I would like to have with people who, who are reading the book. Okay. <clears throat>